Hello and welcome to this video workshop on anthotype printing with me, Ed Carr. So a bit about myself, I'm an artist based in Leeds and I work with alternative photographic processes, typically ones considered sustainable, which I adapt into animation. For example, my most recent work was a music video for artist Tycho Jones, printed entirely using the Cyanotype or Blueprint process. I'm also the founder of the Northern Sustainable Darkroom, which is part of the wider Sustainable Darkroom network and helps promote, fund and develop the research of sustainable photographic processes. Most recently, we launched the Photographic Garden, where we grow plants in-house to be used as sustainable alternatives to traditional photographic processes. But today I'm going to be talking about anthotypes, one of the oldest photographic processes. Antotypes were discovered by Mary Somerville in 1842, who then presented her findings to Sir John Herschel, the inventor of the cyanotype. Antotypes make the most of the light-sensitive material in plants. So, a photographic emulsion is made from crushed plant material mixed with either water or pure alcohol. Antotypes can really be made from most plants. That includes forage plants from your local environment, edible plants found in the supermarket, or kitchen waste left over from cooking. But today I'm going to be creating antitypes using leaves from the spinach tree grown in our darkroom garden. If you are at home, however, you can easily use shop-bought spinach or any other plant which you think will create a strong pigment. If you are interested, the book Anthotypes by Malin Fabry has a ton of plants that have been tested and rated, so do check that out. But today you're going to need some plant material, a blender, pure alcohol or water, a cheesecloth, some strong paper, a paintbrush, a digital positive, two bits of glass or a frame, and some clips to hold it all together. So to create the emulsion, you need your plant material, your water or pure alcohol, and a blender or pestle and mortar. To get enough emulsion, I'd recommend crushing about a handful or two of plant material and just enough water or alcohol that it will properly blend and make enough emulsion. Too much water or too much alcohol can result in a weak solution, meaning you won't get a strong final print. In my experience, I use just enough water or alcohol to wet it, and not so much that it's completely submerged. Once your plants are nicely crushed and blended, you want to strain them using a cheesecloth or something similar to remove excess plant matter. So pour it through the cheesecloth and then give it a good squeeze to make sure you get out every last drop. We then move on to the coating stage. So you want to lie your paper flat on an even surface and then dip your brush in the emulsion and drain off any excess like so. and then coat on the paper in broad, even brush strokes. Once you feel your paper has a nice, even coat, you can then hang it up to dry, ideally in a dark space away from sunshine. After an hour or so, check and see if your paper is dry, and then we can move on to the printing stage. So first of all, you want to place your back piece of glass or frame on a flat surface, then the coated paper on top of that, and then finally the digital positive on top of that. You then want to lay flat your top piece of glass to sandwich it all together nicely. Following this, you want to use your clips to attach everything together and make sure it's nice and safe and secure. It is worth saying that I'm using a digital positive in this case. However, if you don't have the means to make a digital positive, which is printed on acetate using an inkjet printer, then you can always use found objects such as a flower or leaf found in your garden. Once ready, you want to take your antitype outside and ideally leave in direct sun for a number of hours. You'll know your antitype is ready once the exposed areas become bleached, as you can see here. Then take the antitype back inside and prepare to take it apart. Because antitypes take a long time to expose, you can always lift up a corner once you take the frame apart and then put it back together if you feel it needs more time. 
but if you think it's ready then take the frame apart, remove the digital positive and you will have your finished antitype print. So that's the antitype process. As you can see, I personally adapt antitypes into animation. So I would encourage you to play around, to experiment, and most of all, to have fun. And do feel free to get in touch with us at Northern Sustainable Darkroom on Instagram, or tag us in your own antitype experiments.